Do you actually know how much force you put on a leash when you fall off a highline? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. We focus a lot on the forces of our anchors or our webbing, but do we really know how much force our leashes see? It's the only part of our system that's not technically redundant and I don't believe that a dynamic rope inside a tubular webbing is redundant. If you tie in twice, that is redundant. I actually didn't know how much force we put on our leashes. So I put the dynamometer between my leash and myself and decided to go for a hop. So we did this test at our midline that we have here locally and it's only about 30 meters long and that's a good test because I feel when I whip there that there's more shock on my body than if I'm on a big, big high line that absorbs my fall. So I did three whippers with our threaded leash, which is a nine millimeter dynamic rope inside of an 11 16th tubular webbing. And then I did three whips on the line with a dynamometer on the anchor. So we know how tight the line is so we can compare to what our forces are on the leash. Then I decided to take my 11 mil static rope and go back out there and see if a static rope makes a big difference. And you can see our charts as we go along. And you can see that we were playing with our slow-mo feature while we were doing this. What's harder than climbing a leash? Climbing a leash with a dyno where you want to put your foot. Um, we, this leash is a bit long because the dyno is added to it. Um, and we just got about two kilonewtons on our first whip. So let's, let's try that again. Oh no! <laughs> My hat! So we lost the hat on the second whip. I've got, let's see here, 522 pounds of force. So again, little over two kilonewtons. I'm going to shorten up the leash for my third whip just to see how different after I take about one foot, one and a half feet um, shorter on my leash. Wow, that was interesting results. I've got 580 pounds of force, about 60 pounds more than my other two tests. You can see here how much I shortened up my leash. I could stand up fully, but um, I definitely could feel my leash. So it's as short as we would ever tie it. Okay, I'm pretty happy to be tied into my leash properly, finally. I almost got my finger stuck in there on the last whipper. So the dyno is now on the anchor. And right now we have 132 pounds of force, which is about a half a kilonewton uh, without me on it. And then, with me on it. What does it read? 396, 402, 412, 430, 464, 482, 498, 524. What's the max force right now? 610. 1240. Ooh, shook the whole tree. 1234. Okay, I'm gonna reset it now. Okay, it's reset. It's at 626 now. Wow, so short lines. This is only about 30 meters. Puts on quite a bit force than the line that we did at CRG that was 240 feet or 70-ish meters. So bigger high lines are safer. So I came back the next morning and decided to try an 11 millimeter static rope, which is a bit different than our dynamic rope threaded stuffed leashes we're used to. Um, I just took my first whipper and I got just about two kilonewtons. I actually have my taped soft shackle because you cannot cross load a soft shackle. Um, so I feel better about my setup today. But. Um, this, this rope is excessively long. I've never taken a whipper with a rope this long, except when I rope jumped. So now I'm gonna shorten this thing up 
and um, take uh, two more whippers uh, at a normal leash length. Okay, I shortened up my leash quite a bit. You can see here how much I had to shorten it. But anyways, I got 2.06 kilonewtons. So it's interesting that I got uh, the same results even though my leash is uh, probably almost half as short. So I got 2.36 on that whip. Um, I did not have a fresh knot. This has been whipped on once already. So maybe that had something to do with that. But we're, uh, we're relatively the same each time. Um, it's interesting that the length in this case hasn't changed anything. So now I'm going to tie in properly and enjoy my freaking midline and stop whipping. So we got about two-ish kilonewtons on our leash, regardless of which one we used. Now I do think that I got a four or five kilonewtons on my leash once before when I did one leash fall. And I'm trying to figure out how to recreate that situation. But my estimation, my hypothesis, is that on a big, big high line, like two, three hundred meters, that my force on my leash is one or less kilonewtons, because it feels really soft when I whip. Now I found it interesting that our static rope and our threaded leash ended up being around the same, even though it was a pretty short high line that didn't seem to absorb my fall a lot. But it is my goal to put the dynamometer on our leash in more highline situations so we can get more data to see how much force this sees in more situations. Now a little disclaimer from something I learned. Don't attach things like this to your harness and your leash with carabiners. You may have saw that in the video. That was a terrible idea. Um, I did end up taping a soft shackle and tying the leash in directly, which should have been obvious to me. But even then, that's untested and you shouldn't do it. And leashes in general are not redundant when you only tie in to one thing. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. Thank you.